much appreciated. I um I just saw Mpumalanga as well uh, registering that they are in the house. And uh, we are going to give over Eastern Cape, yes. <laughs> I'm going to give over to my good pastor, Dr. Papu, to take us through. I know, Pastor, you have covered uh, five steps already. Um, day four, I'm not going to recap. I'll give you time so that you continue with um, uh, the other steps. Let me hand over to you now. Thank you very much, uh, my sister and welcome to everyone. I see also that Mpumalanga, uh, Mpumalanga is here, not Mpumalanga, Pulukwana is here in Free State, all right? Um, greetings to everyone and uh, what a beautiful day. So it's true, uh, those who are joining us now, we've done already five, five steps. Now, you know, we're rushing through these steps, but I wish, I wish I, I could see some indication here of those who are really reading, reading this book. It's a small, I call it a dynamite. It's, it, it will revolutionize your life. It's an amazing little book. So let's recap a little bit. So we've got five steps. We've done five steps already. Um, our embracing of God's love, understanding that God loves us, our recognition of our need for Christ, our experience of rep repentance, confession and consecration. But remember, this is not a step like I've done this step and I've got to the second step and I'm done. It, it is a process. I will, you don't just come to know the love of God and it ends there. It continues to, to unfold and you continue to grow in your understanding of how much God loves you. And uh, we look at those, how that happens. And your recognition of your need for Christ, the closer you come to Christ, the more you realize how much you need him. Your experience of repentance. Remember, you don't repent once. Throughout our lives, we make mistakes and we we make blunders. We, the Bible says, if you confess, He will He will He will forgive you. And so there's repentance, of a recognition, a sorrow for sin, and a turning away from sin that happens throughout our lives. There's confession as well that we spoke about yesterday, um, and there's consecration. All those are are not just um, events; they are also processes. Um, confession, we said, is not it's simple but not easy. Um, it is it is just and reasonable. But uh, the Lord does not require us to do some grievous thing in order that we may for, we experience forgiveness. Uh, it's just uh, Bible makes it very clear. If you confess your sin, and of sort, we said confession is a result of repentance. If there's no genuine repentance, you will never have genuine um, confession. And then the surrendering of anything that uh, has the potential to separate us from God. It may not be seen in itself, but it may actually lead us to an environment where uh, yielding to sin will be possible. Surrendering all of that. So we've got the five. Uh, we've done the five. Now we, we introduce the second two uh, after five. We're going to do two today. That is now, it's, it's, it's in your book. It, it says uh, faith and acceptance. And the second one is test of discipleship. So what we deal with in, in step number six is accepting by faith that we have fulfilled the requirements that would actually lead us to a point of experience forgiveness for our sins. In other words, we have done that which God, which the Bible expects us to do, uh, and therefore we expect to receive, to experience a peace and, and forgiveness and cleansing of our sins. That's, that's number six. Number seven, and then it's a life of faith. It's a life of, it's a Christian life, uh, being a blessing to those around us, a life of a, disciples, of a disciple. So now let's delve in then, let's dive in into the, um, into the next two uh, steps. So you've gone through the five steps I've just mentioned. Uh, what do you expect now? What must happen now? Uh, you've consecrated everything to God. Um, or you remember, this is this consecration also. Um, uh, I have to keep saying that it's a process. You wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I give my life to you. I give my will to you and my plans that you may direct me. Now, everything I am, I give it to you. All right, so that you may work, may work in me. So you have done all of that. Uh, what then? What then is expected of you? As I've indicated, peace and forgiveness for your sins. Because remember, you have consecrated, you have, you have asked for forgiveness, you have confessed. Now you must experience peace of mind. Now you must be cleansed. You must. God must cleanse you. But how does that happen? You must accept by faith that what God has promised to do, that He does that. Well, sometimes we end 
And then we keep doubting if God has done it. If you have committed sin and you have confessed your sin, you have con consecrated your life to God, that's it. You accept by faith that God has done that. This is where we talk about being saved by faith. You accept by faith that what the Lord has promised, he has done. He says, if you confess, I will cleanse you. So you go to him and ask him to wash you as he has promised. And once you say that, you accept that he has washed, not he will, that he has washed you. This is very important. Sometimes we, we, we struggle to accept that God has accepted us. So therefore, we need to accept by faith that we have been accepted because the devil will always throw these doubts at you that you think God has forgiven you. After all these things, do you think God will forgive this terrible sin that you have committed? You may pray, but God has not forgiven you. So we keep praying for the same sin every day. Lord, forgive me for stealing yesterday. Next week, Lord, forgive me for having stolen the other day. You, you, you don't move. You've, got, you've, you've prayed, you've confessed. Accept now that God has forgiven you. The second one, of course, which we'll talk about uh, after, uh, or let, 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 me, let, me, let me not get into that. I'll come, I'll come to it. So you, you need that peace. You need heaven's forgiveness and peace and love in the soul. What then do you do? You've confessed your sins. You've put them away. Now you've resolved to give yourself to God. Now go to him. This is what Ellen Dwight is saying. Ask him to wash away your sins and give you a new heart. Then believe that he does because, this, because he has promised it's a beautiful story of the man, you know, the man who was sick for 38 years. Um, when, when God speaks to this man, uh, when Christ speaks to this man, he says, rise, take up the bed and walk. The guy hasn't been walking for 38 years, beloved. And that word, rise, take up the bed and walk. And, and, and the story is, he did, not, he did not wait to feel, to feel well. He did not wait to feel the muscles and feel the strength. And he didn't wait to, to, for all of that. He, he just obeyed. He stood up. And as he stood up and as he um, uh, exerted his will to stand up, God supplied the fact. There was no feeling that says, you know what? I feel like I can walk now. I can feel it in my bones. Let me, let me stand up. No, there was nothing like that. He just said, okay, you say I must walk. Let me stand up and then walk. So it, then, then the, the, the message then is that he obeyed the word of God. He believed Christ's word. He believed that he was made whole. He made the effort at once. He willed to walk. He did walk. He acted on the word of Christ and God gave them the power. He was made whole. Now, if you have confessed your sins and you have given yourself to God, if you believe the promise, believe that you are forgiven, believe that you are cleansed, God will supply the fact you are made whole. Don't wait to feel whole. You are made whole. Say, this is Ellen Dwight. I believe it. It is so, not because I feel it, but because, but because God has promised. He says, if you confess, I will forgive you. Now, Romans 8 verse 1, there is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. You know that for a fact because the Bible says so. You are not condemned. Yes, you, you may still have to face the consequences of your sin. You may still have to go to court if, if it was a crime. You may still have to face your partner. If it included that, you may still have to face your neighbor. Yes, that uh, um, notwithstanding, but you are no longer under condemnation. God has accepted you. You have been cleansed. God has forgiven you. Accept that by faith and move on. Stop getting stuck and being stuck in this thing of refusing to accept that God has forgiven you. And I've heard people say, Christians, by the way, I will never, I will never forgive myself for what I've done. Oh, come on. If God has forgiven, why? What, what stops you from, from forgiving yourself? Jesus loves, listen to this statement. Jesus loves to have us come to him just as we are. Just as we are, beloved, sinful, helpless, dependent, he loves that as you draw near to him with confession and repentance, he will draw near to you with mercy and forgiveness. That's the first part, stage number six, faith and acceptance. Now we come to this, the, the, the seventh one, uh, the second for the day, uh, the test of discipleship. Now here, the, the, the focus here is, now that you have experienced the peace, the inward peace, what's next? 
The next thing now, this is now, we, we're coming up with a full mature Christian now. You have experienced the inward peace, which is very important. Sometimes you have an external behavior with no inward peace. Now that's a fake Christian. You've got the inward peace. That's where it starts. You've got this belief, understanding that God has washed you, that has cleansed you. You feel it now. God has supplied the fact you're moving uh, in faith. Now, what's the next step? The next step now is living a life of discipleship. The next step now is the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifested in your life. The next step now is you living a life that is a blessing to others. Now, take these two together. Now you've got the inward reality. You've got the inward uh, peace. You've got the, the peace of mind. Then you've got the behavior that agrees with your conviction. All right, that's it. Now you are a Christian. But now the next six steps, we're going to talk about those tomorrow and the other day. The next six steps is how to maintain that. It's how to sustain the inward peace and the external behavior. The inward peace of forgiveness, uh, that feeling and knowing that experience experience of, uh, of sins having been cleansed, uh, um, how to sustain that. That's what we're going to be looking at in the six, six steps. And that's it. We're done. So if the heart has been renewed by the, actually 2 Corinthians 5, 7, let's start there. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Become new now. All the life, the old life has passed away. <laughs> if you were a thief, as we sing the song, the, 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 the piper used to smoke, I smoke it no more. That's the life of a disciple now. There's the peace inside. You may not be smoking, but you still, if you don't have peace, then you have not experienced the genuine um, 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 repentance. So, so that life has passed away. Uh, behold, all things are new now. And now people around can see for the first time that you're a Christian. The five steps, if, if I may say, it's, 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 it's within, it's, 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 it's something you experience and we may not see it. Uh, we may not even know that you are a Christian. By the time we see, say, hey, this man has changed. It is because those five steps have already been manifested in your life. So, so discipleship is basically what we are focusing on in mission and evangelism, that we become followers of Christ, that, that we, we bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if the heart has been renewed by the Spirit of God, the life will bear witness to the fact if the life has been renewed. One of the tragedies in our Christian journey is we call ourselves Christian and we convince everybody that we're Christians, but the life doesn't show. It doesn't give witness of what has happened inside. The contrast will be clear and decided between what you have been and what you are. The contrast will be clear and decisive. Your children will say, something has happened to my daddy, I know. Your wife will say, something has happened to my husband, I know. Your husband will say, something has happened to my wife, I know. I know of couples, I know of husbands who, because of what God did to their wives, how he changed their lives, that they said, you know what? Because I heard that story just the other day. I'm following you, what, uh, seeing what God has done in your life. I also want to experience the same. Your children, your neighbors, those around you at work, people will know. The contrast will be clear, will be clear. The character. Now, I must also add that that um, character is not revealed by, as Ellen Dwight says in page 57, very important, I wish you could mark it, not by occasional good deeds or occasional misdeeds, but by the tendency of the habitual words and acts. In other words, your craft is not always, you know, you, I mean, it's not like I've done a good thing today, I've done a bad thing today, so I'm a bad person. I've done a good thing, I'm a good person. I've done, it's, it's gonna be the trend of your life. Yes, there'll be those ups and downs, but, but the graph is always growing. It is always go, uh, um, um, uh, becoming better. Um, your words and your acts will show that you have indeed experienced genuine repentance. And you can't talk about genuine repentance if it does not work reformation. But then she mentions two errors that the children of God need to be aware of, particularly those who have just come to trust his grace. Even those who have long been uh, in this journey, we sometimes um, str struggle with those two. The first one is looking uh, to your own works, trusting uh, to anything that you can do um, to bring yourself into harmony with Christ. In other words, you... You say, I'm going to church and you post about that. I'm praying three times a day. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm retaining tithe. And so you trust that to commend yourself to God. 
such that now you, you don't need Christ. All you need is what you can produce, which is dangerous. Remember, all that man can do without Christ is polluted with selfishness. Even the good thing that you do without Christ makes you think that you don't need Christ. It is polluted with sin. The things we do go through this sinful nature. They are polluted with sin. They still need the blood of Jesus Christ to, to, to be purified. It is grace and grace of Christ alone through faith that can make us holy. Always keep that in mind. The fact that you keep the Sabbath doesn't necessarily mean that then now you can go to God and say, I've kept the Sabbath, now do this for me. Because even in the keeping, even in the keeping of God's law, even in doing that which pleases God, we still need the righteousness of Christ to cover us. We're going to come back to that later on. The second error is the belief in Christ, the belief uh, that the belief in Christ releases us from keeping God's law. Now I'm saved by grace. I'm free. I don't have to worry. Saved by grace. I've, I've believed by faith. We don't have to worry about the commandments of God. We don't have to worry about stealing. Beloved, if you, you're going to keep saying that, there will be no difference between your life and the life of a person who has not accepted Christ. So uh, since by faith we become partakers of the grace of cross, uh, some people think that our works have nothing to do with our redemption. That's not what the Bible teaches, beloved. 1 John 5, 3, 1 John 2, 4. He that says, I know him and does not keep his commandments, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. If you give yourself to him, page 62, if you give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, when I say page 62, brother, let me explain that. In other books, it may not be page 62, but just follow the chapter. If you give yourself uh, to him and accept him as your personal savior. Sinful as your life may have been, for his sake you are counted righteous. This is very important. You give yourself to Christ and accept him by faith, the one who died on the cross. And you have to go to Romans 5, 18 and 19 to really appreciate that, that through one man's sin, we have been made sinners, and through one man's obedience, we are made righteous. And so uh, Christ's character stands in place of your character. And you are accepted before God as if you have not sinned. By faith, we accept the life and the death of Christ. And God accepts you. We are accepted in heaven. We are accepted by God on the basis of Christ's character, not our character. That's number one. Number two, then more than this, she continues, Christ changes your heart. And it is that changed heart that becomes a blessing to your wife and your children. You're standing before God is based on the character that Christ has, has produced in his life. You are covered by his character. That's what it means when you say you are washed by his blood, covered by the white linen, the white garment, so that you can stand before God. That is perfect righteousness of Christ, number one. But in front of your children, you must be covered by your character. They must see your changed life. They must see a man who was violent, who is no longer violent. And that, therefore, happens, is possible uh, as Christ changes your heart on a daily basis and abides in your heart by faith. And let me say, beloved, even in our Christian journey, uh, as we close, we shall often bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes. But we're not to be discouraged, beloved. And this is where we need to be very careful. And, and here is something very in one statement that is, I know I've been saying this to all the statements, but here's one of those that are powerful as well. Keep it in your mind. Even if we are overcome by the enemy, we are not cast off. We are not forsaken and rejected by God. Keep that in mind. Just because you have committed blunder, you have sinned, and you have, you have been overcome, you are experiencing these shortcomings and, and mistakes, you have been overcome by the enemy. You think you are cast off. He says you are not forsaken and rejected by God. Here's another beautiful one. The closer you come to Jesus, the more faulty you will appear in your own eyes. For your vision will be clearer and your imperfections will be seen in broad and distinct contrast to his perfect nature. And if you don't see your, your own moral deformity, it could be that or it is an unmistakable evidence that we have not had a view of the beauty and excellence of Christ. The closer you come to Christ, 
the more you need him. Because the more you see how filthy you are. When you are far away, you can think you are good. But as you come close, you see the contrast. And there's a parting paragraph. The less we see to esteem in ourselves, the more we shall see to esteem in the infinite purity and loveliness of our Savior. A view of our sinfulness will drive us to him who can pardon. And when the soul, realizing his helplessness, reaches out after Christ, he will reveal himself in power. The more our sense of need drives us to him and to the word of God, the more exalted views we shall have of his character and the more fully we shall reflect his image. And may God bless us and may that be our experience. Let us pray our kind and loving Father. We pray for peace and rest. The assurance, dear Father, that our sins are forgiven. The assurance that we are indeed your children, that we have been cleansed. And we thank you, Lord, for that. Now, dear Father, as you have promised, may the fruit of the Holy Spirit be manifested in our lives so that those who are around us may also come and enjoy and benefit from our changed lives. Bless us, dear God, and we confess our, our sins before you this morning, our sinfulness, and we ask you, dear Father, to walk with us as we consecrate our lives to you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.